Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pam Osborne, and it's an honor for me to be the celebrant at this program honoring the life of Todd Olson. Todd's daughter, Elizabeth, and I have been close friends for many years. On behalf of Elizabeth, I want to welcome you to this place, which is now blessed with the spirit of love and friendship you bring here to commemorate a long life well lived. This is a meaningful place for us to gather. Todd bought this house new in 1956 and lived here until just a few short months ago. Today, Todd would have turned 100 years old. 100 years is a long time. He was born in a time before medicine had the benefit of penicillin, insulin, or band-aids. Before households had the benefit of frozen food, or microwaves, <laughs> before music had the benefit of MP3 players or CDs, before travel had the benefit of air jet airliners, and before communications had the benefit of the cell phone or the World Wide Web, and before entertainment had the benefit of television. He didn't want to have a 100th birthday party, so Elizabeth quips that he found a way of not having to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Not many of us will have as long a life as he did, particularly with the quality of life that he enjoyed. So when someone we admired and loved so well makes it as far as he did in life, it's truly a cause for celebration. <clears throat> we come together to honor Todd's life, to express our love and admiration for him, to be grateful for having known him, to share stories and laughter of how he touched our lives, and to say goodbye. We remember his intelligence, his charm, his quick wit, his analytical mind. We will miss his quiet, courteous nature, his wisdom, and his intellectual curiosity. He was a lifelong learner, a reader especially of science and nature, who remembered what he read. He was someone you would want on your trivia team. <laughs> we smile at the thought of him sitting in his lazy boy in the den, listening to opera while gazing at the view of the garden, or watching a National Geographic <coughs> program on TV. We celebrate what his life has meant, but also what it will always mean. In this spirit of celebration, let's have a moment of silence for reflection to remember Todd and how he touched our lives. After a few moments, I will say a word to close this time. Thank you. Todd's full name was Cardiff Oscar Austin Olson. Todd was the name bestowed by his older sister, Betty, when he was about eight years old. As a child, he was also known as Card, Sharky, not Card Sharky, <laughs> and Kitchener, after Lord Kitchener of Khartoum, a senior British Army officer and a colonial administrator they were studying about in school. Todd's maternal grandparents came from Germany. His paternal grandparents, Sven and Marie Olsen, came to Canada from Norway on a ship in the early 1870s. The family settled near Bear Lake, Ontario, with many other Norwegian settlers. Sven was one of the settlers who helped build St. Olaf's Church that still stands today. Marie and Sven had nine children, so there were many cousins, and Todd and Whipple hosted a reunion for many of them here in the 1980s. <coughs> Todd's parents, Martha and William, bought a 60-acre farm at the corner of Young Street and Davis Drive in Newmarket and rented the farmland to adjacent farmers. Todd was born during World War I, the youngest of three. He remembers, as a very small <coughs> child, hearing references to the war and believed it was related to the traffic at the end of the driveway on Young Street. <laughs> His initial school experience was in a one-room schoolhouse on that same street. <coughs> the family stayed on the farm until 1924, when Todd was eight, 
and they moved to Welland, Ontario, so his father could work on renovations, widening and deepening the Welland Canal. At age 12, Todd started enjoying trips to New York City to visit his sister Betty and family. He loved New York and the long, pleasant Italian <coughs> family meals they served. He remembered the family as being very kind to him and indulging him in many ways. Because he did not like tomatoes, a special pasta sauce was made for him. Todd's Uncle Fred and family lived in Niagara Falls, New York, and Todd and his parents would often be invited there for family for holiday meals. It was the Prohibition era, and Todd's mother was especially anxious on those trips across the border because of the alcohol hidden under the seat of the car. <laughs> The family returned to the Newmarket Farm in 1930 when Todd was 14. He attended Newmarket High School, where he enjoyed gymnastics and competed in track and field events. He was particularly good at high jumping and broad jumping, probably because of his strong legs walking two and a half miles each way to school. Todd's appreciation of classical music started in high school when he attended the annual Gilbert and Sullivan productions at Pickering College. Todd's father was often away from the farm working various railway construction jobs up north during the Depression. Todd stayed at home after high school and helped care for his mother and the farm. After World War II broke out, he moved to Toronto and worked in the aircraft industry. A friend introduced him to Hazel Brillinger in the spring of 1944. He was impressed by her talent and ability as a musician, pianist, organist, choir director, and they were married later that same year. Elizabeth was born in 1949. Shortly after that, Todd began work for British American Oil and took classes to become a chartered accountant. He achieved that goal in 1950. Two years later, BA Oil transferred him to Calgary as chief accountant in the Exploration and Development Department. When Gulf Oil Canada purchased BA Oil in 1956, he returned to Toronto as assistant treasurer at the Toronto head office, where he stayed until he retired in 1980. Todd and Hazel divorced in 1970. Four years later, he met Whipple Steinkraus. They enjoyed a happy, full, and adventurous 35 years together until her unexpected death in 2009. He told Elizabeth those were the happiest years of his life. Elizabeth supported Todd's continued independence in his home for the last seven years of his life. His niece, Janet Whitehouse, came to Toronto quarterly the last few years so Elizabeth could go home to Portland to take care of her personal business. Janet was born on Todd's 18th birthday, so it's her birthday today too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Todd spent the last three months of his life at the Isabel and Arthur Meehan Manor. The staff there were wonderful. His friends, Heike, Volker, Ruby, and Jim. His private caregivers, Lori, Jamie, Veronica, and Alita, and his daughters supported him with compassion, and he maintained his positive spirit and dignity until his peaceful death on January 22nd. Todd appreciated and often repeated the sentiment hanging on the batter, banner in the kitchen here and ultimately in his room at Meehan Manor. The banner was a gift from Ruby. It reads, life is not a race, but a journey to be savored each step of the way. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift. <coughs>
One of the words that keeps being repeated in the many thoughtful messages that I have received about my dad is gentleman. We were charmed by this quiet gentleman that I had the good fortune to call dad. Beyond being a person of good and courteous conduct, he was a man of the world, comfortable with different environments, people, himself. For me personally, his gifts were many, but I specifically value my good fortune to have felt loved by him all my life. He always had my back. I always felt his love even when I was a challenging teenager. It's, a wonderful, it's wonderful to experience that sense of love in such an unconditional way. To have someone say it regularly and clearly mean it. To, see, to feel someone light up when you walk in the room. I feel that I will have that love with me for the rest of my life. There is no greater gift than love. Dad was also wise, and although he did not spew forth a lot of advice, his observations and comments often cut to the core of the matter at hand. I loved his brevity. Really, when I think about it, one thoughtful sentence carried more impact than a barrage of thoughts and details that dilute and often obscure what's really important. Dad's humor was most noticeable in his quick wit. I was often delighted and surprised with what would come out unexpectedly. He showed me he was really paying attention and bringing a fun spin to the sometimes ordinary events at hand. He made me smile or laugh often, not roll on the floor laughter, but the quiet smiles that fill a day and make <clears throat> it brighter. Dad's intelligence was not only based on a remarkable brain, but his curiosity and desire to continually learn. He always wanted more knowledge, and he remembered what he learned about the world and could often pull it up when asked, almost like an encyclopedia. If he didn't know, he'd look it up. He didn't show off what he knew, but it was under the surface, and many of us knew that if we asked Todd about science or history or music, for many aspects of the natural world, he would be able to tell us. Dad was grateful. From everything he told me, I believe he had a good and loving early home life. He was especially full of appreciation as he got older. In the last half of his life, he enjoyed 35 very happy years with Whipple, and he enjoyed her wonderful family. He loved this home and his daily check-ins and adventures with his best friend, Ken Wallace. Every day, Dad spoke of his gratitude. He knew he was approaching the end of his life, and he would laugh and express in one way or another how fortunate he felt for this or for that. He was practical and understood the impermanence of things. Although not religious, I was surprised by how many books he had about religions in his personal library. There was a peace that emanated from him that calmed and grounded me, and I believe many of the core values by which he led his life would resonate with what many of us might consider spirituality. Although I doubt he would use that word, he would refer to the great mystery. On that score, he believed it was impossible to really know. For me, Dad set an example on so many levels. He chose to be happy. He chose to be appreciative. I know I will always treasure that he was my loving dad, that I had these last seven years with him, that he had a great life and a peaceful death, and that I will have his love with me always. There is much for us to celebrate today. Thank you for coming. Happy birthday, Dad.
Let's let this beautiful music bring us to a last moment of silence. Let's use this time to be still and breathe in each moment of life with a sense of gratitude <coughs> for its gifts of beauty, love, and grace. Let's affirm the cycles of life and of death, for we know that we are all part of an endless and mysterious cycle of existence. Let's pause to remember Todd and celebrate his life. I'll close this time with a word. Thank you. I want to cover a few housekeeping details now before we close. We'll have a final poem, a few closing words, and a final musical music selection. And then everyone is invited to stay and visit and share stories about Todd. A few of us have been tapped to take down most of the folding stairs upstairs and down, so there'll be more room to move about. Feel free to move between upstairs and downstairs as you wish. There are refreshments and a guest register for you to sign on both levels of the house. Also, in several areas, enjoy the slideshow prepared by Todd's brother-in-law, Bill Jensen. Memento cards are available for you to take with you, and Elizabeth has also gathered some items of Todd's that you're welcome to take and keep. Because there are so many of us celebrating here today, the neighbors graciously lent us their driveways to ease parking, so we need to close our gathering today at four as a courtesy to them. <laughs> and now our final poem. It's by Brian Andrews. <coughs> it is still so new, and all we see is the empty space. But that is not how it is in the landscape of the heart. There is no empty space, and he still laughs and grapples with ideas and plans and nods wisely with each of us in turn. We are proud to have known him. We are proud to have called him friend. Elizabeth asked me to let you know that Todd's cremains will be placed in the family plot in the New Market Cemetery in the spring. In closing, I want to encourage you to think of what you still have that Todd gave to you. What is the legacy that he left to you? He will always be who he was to you. He will always be a part of who you are. I hope that when you leave here today, you will take with you a deep feeling of celebration for Todd and his long life well lived. <coughs>
Thank you.